Uh, I like that announcement. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everyone, PitNug members. This is our very first Lunch and Learn. The topic is Sweet Analytics, and our presenter is Brian Bishop, who is the president of the PitNug group. He's also from Pyrotechnico, and uh, he's going to share his knowledge today. So, uh, Brian, go ahead. I pass it over to you, and I'm going to go on to mute, and I appreciate if everyone else would be on mute. Um, in, unless you have a question, so go ahead. Okay, so you guys see my uh, my NetSuite window? I do. Okay, well that, that's positive. I should mean everyone does. So I'm gonna talk today about Suite, suite Analytics, how to um, set up the analytics, how to use them a little bit, what they're used for, and I, I'll start out by just doing a quick little show and tell of Suite Analytics. So um, it, when, when you look at it, there there's reports, uh, there's safe searches, and now there's Suite Analytics. And I, and I think originally NetSuite wanted to look at really potentially combining the best ofs of safe searches and, and the reports and moving it all into one kind of data, pivot table, chart graphical kind of interface. And I think they've, they've somewhat succeeded in that. Um, of course, I think right now we're kind of stuck with all three and you have to decide what you use and when. So, you know, I do a mix and you'll probably see that with what I show today. I do a, a, a mix of that. So um, a great example is right here. This is a, uh, this is a kind of a sales funnel view and it shows um, stages of our sales orders. And when you go into um, the workbook itself, I'm gonna show you some examples today of how to set this up, but basically you get to the point within analytics where um, and, and as it as it loads, this is always the pros and cons of doing li live demos, as Bill Gates and Steve Jobs have taught us over the years. Sometimes I go better than others, depending on connectivity and whatnot. Um, so each workbook starts out with uh, with a data set, and it takes a second to to load it in there. Um, you can then from that data set make uh, pivot tables, charts. And I'll, I'll ignore the loading for a second. I'll get to a couple more live examples in a minute. But you'll get to the, the pivot tables, uh, the charts from those, and you could relatively do unlimited pivot tables and charts off this. So you make a data set, and you then can make uh, pivot one, pivot two, pivot three, chart one, chart two, chart three. And this is an example that we did some years back. So this is just a pivot table off the data that shows us our, our funnel and our number of uh, shows by year as of a few years ago. We could also turn that into a, a chart format. Um, we broke off different parts of it. And I'll probably jump back to this later, but what, why I picked this example is when you look at the workbook, and I'm gonna go over kind of each one of these pieces in a minute. This is just a high level overview. When you jump from the workbook into the data set itself, uh, you'll be able to see some of the, the complexities of this. And let's see here. Okay, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna use this kind of when I wrap up to show an example of this is where we really built this with nested logic in here to get to some of these views. So this one took some, some hours, I, I won't lie, to figure out the nested logic, but once we got it to work, um, it works. So, okay, and then this is kind of what I was talking about right here. So we basically got into where we, we took the data, we connected a bunch of different things, but then actually got to the point of, of doing a nested and statement within the ORs to get to what we really wanted. So we sectioned off the data to say, you know, we wanna look at certain of our sales orders. Um, we wanted to look at, you know, transaction is the main line, um, a show date, and then we started nesting some OR logic. And then the final OR, we, lest, we nested two AND statements to section off whether it was before or after 2019 with different logic to pull the sales orders in as we changed some of our processes and our transactions. So this really does let you get to the point of building the complex nested logic um, to get to the results. But, but again, it takes a little practice and a little time with the data sets to get there. So what I'll do is um, I'm gonna jump over to um, our trucking company to give some examples here and to kind of go through the, the, um, the analytics set itself. So 
this is uh, one example right here is we do kind of a, a revenue by driver by week pivot from analytics and we have it right on our dashboard in, in a view just like we did the charts and everything so it lets you uh, put up on the native dashboard i think up to five different views whether they're pivots or charts from your analytics from any analytics workbook or collection of workbooks that you have um, i've made custom tabs up top and and actually you could stick in a ton of them as much as your system can load obviously you saw some of the data sets have slower or faster load times than others in here um, but you can put as many as you want on a page from analytics. Um, if you make a custom tab, like I made a custom tab called trucking and, and I could just fill it with, with analytics outputs or save search outputs or portlet outputs or whatever I want to do. Um, okay. And then I, I mentioned, I wanted to go over real quick before I jumped in thoughts on where to use searches versus reports versus analytics. Again, it's a little more up to you and what you're comfortable with. You know, I think the analytics is the tool that, that I've, I've said before in these meetings are kind of the, the wave of the future. And um, I, I think that, that from, from that perspective, I think you want to look at the, the um, analytics tools and, and where you could replace your saved searches or where you could augment your saved searches with tools in the analytics and get the dashboard views because they're gonna put the most amount of time from next week's perspective in upcoming years into analytics. And in general, they've made you know enhancements with the formulas, enhancements with what data sets you can connect to. So I've even found there's been a few cases where I've been able to solve something with an analytic, um, with a data connection, a you know kind of a sub record relationship that I wasn't able to actually do um, in a in a search or a report. So I'm starting to see some cases now where we actually solve some problems with analytics and analytics only. So again, it's kind of like a tool in your toolbox. Um, it, it's I would say it's necessary as a NetSuite admin to, to know it, but also there's some places where it's the only tool for the job compared to save searches and, and reports. But it, you know, if you look up here, I've got plenty of partlets fed by save searches as well, where I put in some complex logic. I'm using some of their native metrics fields, and then I've also got analytics wrapped in. So I'm kind of using different tools for the job depending on, on uh, which one I think will do it the best. So I'll jump to the interface. Obviously, I assume you guys all know as admins, or if you're here, that analytics is simply under the analytics tab up top. Uh, you click it, you go in, and you've got, and they've been changing this interface every quarter, but you've got workbooks and data sets. Obviously, you can also tag my favorite workbooks up top, which I've, I've not actually really found that much of a use for. Um, but if you want a quick view, if there's some that you always use in your analytics suite, because I obviously I'm getting a lot now starting to build up in here. Um, you can obviously tag them as a favorite workbook, um, which, which would be as, as simple as me going like this and saying Mark is a favorite. Um, and then I guess it would appear up top. So anyway, not, not, now I've actually done that. Um, but anyway, so again, data sets is where you want to start. The data set feeds the workbook. The workbook is where you could further manipulate the data and make the, the pivots and, um, and the charts. So I'm going to jump in and show you guys that, but I guess I'll take my first pause because I'm kind of through my first couple agenda items I wanted to talk through. Um, what questions do you guys have so far based on what I've shown, if any? Okay, so moving, moving right along. I'm gonna jump in here to, to my workbook, what am I doing? Sorry, I'm gonna jump into my data set first. Um, so th this is a completed data set that's, that's pulling something fairly simple. Um, it's pulling from our sales order and, and purchase order, but for, for really for this conversation, it's sales order is the only thing coming in. Um, it's pulling in transactions, it's pulling in our main line as faults, it's pulling in our subsidiary as our trucking subsidiary, pulling in sales orders and pulling in specific transaction lines. So I got part deal three over 10, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back and I'm gonna build this out from scratch for you guys. So if I were in here, I would first start with data sets. These are all the data sets I have. I would click new data set. I could copy an old one, but I'll have the, the fun of building one out for you today. 
click on transaction. And so you can see, I kind of get back to a raw view where down the left-hand side um, is the transaction um, data, if you will, and then all the different connected data from that transaction. Um, I, I'm going to give NetSuite a couple of pros and cons. It also kind of kickstarts you with certain fields here for these transactions. I'm going to give NetSuite a couple of pros and cons. Um, this looks confusing as you get into it, and you can see there's a lot of repetitive type information. So there's the customer that created the transaction, or the employee that created it, or the partner, or the, 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 the vendor, et cetera. So what that means is if you were to come up here and search for a field, like name, you get a lot of name fields. You also get obviously first name, last name, all that stuff, but you also get the name field because as you know, the NetSuite name exists in basically every kind of record, every kind of transaction, it's got a name field. And that name field is different things. Sometimes it's the customer's name or the entity's name or the vendor's name or the person's name. So that's one place where you kind of have to know what you're looking for. But from the, from the get-go, transaction is highlighted in blue. The fields that are over here already are in blue and it's giving you some of the common ones like the date of the transaction, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to, let's say, take type. I'm going to drag it up here and drop it in criteria. And I'm going to choose sales order. And I say apply. So now I'm only going to be looking at sales order lines. Uh, next up, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to get subsidiary. So again, I could go fishing for it, but it's easier subsidiary, if I could spell, it's easier for me to just grab it right from here. So, and subsidiary is a transaction line field in this case. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, it's a lot less than name, but as you can see, subsidiary pops up along a lot of, a lot of entities here. So you could see that there's a subsidiary of the sales rep. There's a subsidiary of the picker. There's a subsidiary of the entity, the employee that's actually doing the transaction. So this is where you have to get good at, at understanding the data set, just like for those of you that are into safe searches or those of you who are into suite scripting or those of you who are into reports, you kind of have to know how to work with the naming. Um, so again, in this case, I'm gonna take the transaction line subsidiary and it is F expedited. And that is our tracking company. I'm gonna choose it. With a little luck, my data doesn't disappear. And if it does, I picked the wrong one. And so, and that's why I didn't wanna build a completely complicated one to show this as I talk through it. Um, some of it takes a little practice and it's looking at the data and figuring out if it's, it's what you want on there. Um, so again, you can see I've got some, some repeats here and everything and I'm gonna to have to hit up the, um, the main line is true or false. I'm gonna say the main line is true, say apply. And, and, and now I'm starting to get it down to where, as you can see, if I, you know, you could resort your data set as you go through it and everything, I could say sort ascending and I probably just sorted descending. Um, you're gonna to start to get down to the point where, okay, there it goes, now it's logically ascending. Um, you now get down to the point where you start to see that I have sales order one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now I'm, because I used, um, again, mainline is true, I set the subsidiary, I set the type of sales order, and I basically have one line for every uh, sales order in there, and I have a, a dollar amount. Um, I could then go, you know, mainline is false, and I could be down getting now all of the transaction lines, like all your lines on a sales order. And let's see, this is where if I click here and I could come into a, a particular sales order, you start to get to the point then of, of this is the exact transaction that I'm pulling. So now I think it's best sometimes when you're building these to, if you're looking at sales orders or purchase orders, call one up, see what you're actually, uh, see what you're actually, um, getting right here. So like in this case, I'd like to take a look at uh, the mileage that we traveled for each trucking, um, you know, we're running semis for each um, trip that we take with a semi for the trucking division. So in this case, on the sales order, it was like a one day trip, it was $800, it was 648 miles, something to that effect. And 
if I come back here now, I can start to, to work down to that. So I know in this case that my quantity, um, my items, et cetera, I know it's at an 003, so let's keep it easy and just say my item. My item on the transaction line is going to be um, FRT dash O. Let's see here. I can't find it. I can't find you. And maybe I didn't even pick the right one. Let me see. Give me one sec. And I'll go uh, test. So while I fish back for one second here, any questions so far on what I'm doing? Uh, I, I know this is, um, I, I realize as I explain this, this is a lot because it kind of, un, it kind of um, assumes an inherent understanding of the data sets below. But if you're working with safe searches reports, it's relatively the same data set. It's a slightly different way of going after it. So I'm gonna pause for one second to see how everybody's doing on this while I look for one quick thing here. Brian, while you look for that, this is Mari. I do have a question on, yeah. um, when you went into the data sets, it seemed very similar and I don't wanna assume because we know what that does, but you <laughs> typed in transactions. So yeah. when you're building a data set, is it similar to when you were building a safe search that you could look at you know a customer search or kind of use those same high level categories to build a data set are they similar have you found yes um so i, ha I had a couple other toys to show you guys uh transaction line item is any of frt what am i doing wrong let me just copy that and as I said, it, these do take a little bit of back and forth, right? This is basically what I'm building here, but transaction line main, transaction line sub, transaction line. Um, yeah, so I guess there's a couple of things I wanted to point you guys to, and, and maybe now is a good time uh, to, to do it. One is, and, and this is a search in Google, but I'll also throw it in, um, I'll respond to, to Ron and Angela with this. There, there is a 142 page guide called Sweet Analytics Workbook out there. And this starts to get into all of the different um, ways to go after this, build the data sets, et cetera, um, and, and going through that. There's also, have you guys ever looked at this before? The, the 2021, and they come out, 21-1, they come out with one of these every, every time they do a release of NetSuite, the actual schema browser. And there is a records browser, a connect browser, and an analytics browser in there that actually gets you to the point of, of what all these things are named and how to identify them. So generally speaking, they are similar. If I take a look at the, if I take a look at the data set for this, you know, a transaction is a transaction just like in a, in a search. And if you come back to, I'll come back here like I'm building a new one again. If I say new data set, you'll have all of your normal stuff here, like your item, your partner, your projects, transactions, um, any add-ons you did, like we use RS Smart has all their tables in there. Um, all the same ones, work calendar, vendor that you'd be looking for when you would put together safe searches. And then even any custom records that you have like the, um, no, we did the, I did a five Y root cause custom record. I do a, I do a bunch of custom records throughout here, but they're all, as soon as you make the custom record, it propagates over in here. So you, you can use it. Therefore, like, let's say we attach a five Y root cause investigation on a transaction. Let's say if a, a show that we were doing or something needed a five Y root cause, and then it'll all be connected because on our five Y transaction, we choose the transaction that's tied to, it's all connected in this record schema. And it is the same names that you're dealing with when you go into um, when you go into a safe search, for example. Now, though, the the other caveat, and then you have to tell me if I actually answered your question. But the other caveat th is that when you're working with formulas, you're working with the field name. So, like, um, let's see, what's a good one that we mucked around with here? 
and master delivery. Oh, I'm not in my admin role. So you, you know, when you're in your admin role, you, you can click on one of these and it'll give you the actual field name down here in the lower corner. Um, it's when you're in a formula, you're dealing with that field name. When you're in the analytics browser, you should see the actual name you're giving it on, on the screen and it should default to the form that you have checked as the preferred form. So if you call it booking date on your preferred form and on another form, um, like sales order form, preferred sales order form, other, on sales order from other, you call it booking date too, you should still see the booking date that is what comes through in, in your actual, um, in the actual analytics schema uh, browser or the analytics browser. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that does make sense. That's helpful to know in the analytics, if I'm understanding that right, like you would see booking date instead of when you right click in your role, you see like customer entity booking date, like kind of where right. you have to dig to find it. Awesome. Okay. But if you're playing with formulas, you're kind of back to that, that, that um, system name. The okay. ID or whatever. You're, you're, you're back to that, unfortunately. So there's kind of okay. a, there's kind of a mix. All right. So let's see here. So I do item. I'm gonna just have any luck with this. <laughs> okay, I, I, I skinned the cat another way on that one. And so we, we have so many items in ours instead of coming in and trying to fish through this list and find it, which was probably a 10,000 limit, I went into custom values and stuck in what I was looking for, hit apply and, and did it that way. So, so for what it's worth, um, let's see, what else do I want in there? I want quantity in there. I, I think it's good when you, uh, you know, can't, find or can't do something and you find another way we that's you were <laughs> learning that way too so that's good yep and uh you know honestly this is where you start to get into to it as well um so i think what i realized was i learned this one before that that when i was digging the transaction line quantity i was getting negative numbers um for my miles and so i actually took the absolute value of it now, you're gonna look at me and think that's kind of crazy, but again, to, to that point of skinning the cat another way, when you're digging through debits and credits and all that, there's going to be positive and negative sometimes. And for whatever reason, however that one is pulling through analytics, I, I realized at some level, instead of having my 648 positive miles, uh, when I'm pulling it through in the data set, um, let's see wherever I went off to, I had uh, a negative 648 in there for the miles. And, I think, I think I remember as I made the first one, this was about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I made it. I ended up just, as I said, taking the absolute value as I recall in that. But that said, and that's where you would, you would end up doing that in a, um, in a formula field. So let's see here. I'm just gonna leave it at that for one second here. Yeah. So as, as I said, uh, let, let's say you wanted to do something like what I just said, I would, this is the, the formula field part that I wanted to show you guys. You would hit formula and you would type in the formula um, that you want. And it's very similar to the formulas you're typing in, in, um, in a uh, safe search. So let's see here. So I would search through again and I would find quantity, transaction line quantity. So, and then I would say that is an integer. And so what this allows me to do is it says validate. So if I hit validate, it would say output type of the formula set to integer, but the actual return type is the float, change the formula expression, etc. So I could change this to a float, hit validate again. And as you can see real quick, it came up with a check mark. 
the formula definition is correct. So there is a formula checker in analytics, which I kind of like before you just, you know, spit it out in a safe search and it kind of ruins your safe search and doesn't save it sometimes depending on how bad you screw up or it just comes out as invalid expression. This has a little formula checker in it, which is, is pretty cool to get you through it. So again, let's say I'm trying to define that as a, an integer, like before I'll say validate and it gives me an error. It won't let me save it or whatever it says, the output type of the formula is set. To, a, to float, I would change it to a float and say validate. So let's say I did that and I, you know, and I type in a field name, I would call it, um, you know, Brian, uh, Q-U-A-N-T-I-T-Y, Brian quantity, and I'd say save. Now, you know, I have the transaction fields and now I have a formula field here called Brian quantity. I would throw the formula field down here and with a little bit of luck, it is gonna come in at same thing, negative 648, negative 648. So what I would do to that is then I would come into formulas here and I would uh, edit it and I can either come down and find my favorite, the old absolute value, um, or I can multiply it by negative one if I want to be really, if I want to cheat and do it that way. So let's say I would take the absolute value of that one, say validate, it likes my formula, hit save, come in, it's going to refresh. And um, just, just like magic, the absolute value of that negative quantity turns into positive quantity and I have my, my mileage in there. So I, it's kind of silly because why would the quantity be negative? Um, again, sometimes you, you, as you stumble through this, you're gonna find some things like that. And maybe there's some things that they have to fix in upcoming releases. Maybe there's a valid reason I'm not even thinking about for that. But again, that, it kind of handily gave me a, a way to show you guys how to use a formula in here as well. And you can stack up as many formulas as you want. Um, let's see, I, I also, what's one of my other ones I like to use? I like to use, um, I'll take the date and I'll turn it into a week or a quarter or a month um, or a year. And really quick, I will, I will show you how to do that too. So you can get a second example of a formula. Maybe I'll take a break after that and ask for questions. Um, let's say then I'm going to, you know what? It's kind of funny is I'm, I'm now using the my favorite one to keep going back to the other one. So I, I finally found a handy use for the my favorites up there. So what did I do here under the data set? Uh, open data set, formulas. Okay, delivery week. Oh yeah, uh, we'll just, I'm just gonna steal this so you don't have to watch me stumble through remembering how to make a, a, a weak formula in Oracle. So, uh, and I'll get to why I said in Oracle in a second. So let's see here. So I go to analytics, I go PNUG, go back into my data set and I go to formulas. So what I wanna do is I wanna take that that date there or, and actually I, I, I will say I have a, a delivery date is different than the transaction date. So I know that I have a delivery date on the transaction line for every order. So I am simply gonna go like this and get the actual delivery date for our trucking loads. And that's obviously you could do the week off either one of them. Um, you could do it off multiple things if you want but I'll do that. So even though the order was put in here, it was delivered here. So the order was put in on here for 621, delivered there. Um, I'll go new formula. And in this case, I want to, let's see here. Let me steal that. It's actually, um, it's actually what it is, but I wanna I go like this for you so I can find it. So again, just like I did on the other screen, I would type in delivery date. I'd find my transaction line delivery date. I would pop it up there. And this gets back to my point. This is the transaction lines dot customer column pyro delivery date. So that's actually the field name I gave it. And it kind of does the transaction lines dot customer. So that, that's where you get back to kind of that, that looking at it to know the field name, to know what you're going after for the formula. That said, I would do two care transaction lines, cusp column, pyro delivery date, boom. Now this is gonna give me, this is gonna give me an error. Um, and I'm gonna call this by the way, delivery week. 
Uh, does anybody know what error it's going to give me? Because it's not an integer. It's not an integer. So in this case, I'm using two care. That's going to be text. I'm going to change that to a string. I'm going to validate it, and it's going to magically work. Uh, secondly, has anybody ever played with these? If you know the significance of the Oracle YYYYIW versus the YYYYWW, um, when you get into making things weekly, what I learned was the IW gives you a, Satur um, a Saturday to Sunday week. The WW does some really weird seven days from wherever the year starts. Meaning if the year starts on a Wednesday, I was running into like every week was starting on a Wednesday and I was kind of like, why would anybody use this? So this gets back to the ISO work week. Um, but if you ever get into playing with weeks, that, that took me some searching in Google before I figured out what was going on. So if you remember that conversation, it'll save you some time. But that said, what I'm gonna do with this formula is it takes this and turns it into a delivery week. So that was a whole bunch of work to prepare the data set the way I wanted to, because if you're thinking ahead a little bit, I want to like make a bar graph by week, by whatever, by customer or by total miles or whatever. Um, I think I have dollars, I have miles in here. So I can use this data set to do multiple things, dollars by week, miles per week, et cetera. Once we set this part up, now it starts to get pretty easy to go over and make those pivots and make those charts. So the, you know, the real work is getting the data set and the logic the way you want it and the formulas the way you wanted it. Because again, right here, I fixed with formulas, I had a negative quantity, I had a delivery date and time, but I didn't have an actual delivery week. So I converted that to the ISO weeks. And now I have a data set that's, you know, repeatable in here that I can actually go and create a workbook from. So that was Let's see, setting up a data set, related records, formulas, live examples. Okay, the other thing I, before I ask questions or up for questions up, I'll touch on this is a mile deep of things that, um, that it's connected to. You could actually get down here at the bottom to the transaction audit trail, and I've, I've done that in some things. Uh, you could really get to anything that you have related, like sales order, the related sales rep, all the information about the sales rep. So just like when you have those um, dot, dot, dot kind of items at the bottom of the save search and those related records, I've realized this actually takes you slightly farther. And sometimes, but not all times, it solves that double jump problem of where you have a, you know, you want a related record of a related record, you can't get to it. Um, it hasn't gone to the point where you could do query on a query on a query, which is something that's we promised or hoped for in the early going. And they said that you'd be able to do that. It hasn't gotten fully to the level where I can't take this data set and then connect it to something else completely like another data set I made. Um, and that's where you'd still have to get into scripting and all that. But beyond that, this has gone deeper, I will throw out there, than saved searches have gone. And, and I explicitly solved the problem a couple of weeks ago on something where, again, I couldn't do it with a safe search. I was able to do it by going to the, the, the multi-level join conversation in here. Um, so it offers you more. And, and again, you'll have to get good at clicking around in here, but like, let's say one more time, we went into the transaction, we pulled certain fields in, right? And if I wanna pull in anything else from here, you know, I, let's see what else am I, oh, if I wanna pull the, the sales rep of the transaction, you know, I, I would, um, oops, sales rep, I would throw that over here. And again, I would come back up to transaction, click on it. And now, you know, again, your sales rep is in blue because it's over here. And that's how to keep track of that. If I wanted to lose a field, I could just say, uh, remove it, takes it out of the top there. So it does kind of remind you what's in blue that what, of what you have. Same thing, transaction line, it knows that I'm having delivery date and quantity from there. Formulas, these are my formulas, they're in blue. I have them dragged down here. So you kind of keep up top what things you have over here and you can continue to go and add. Um, you know, so if I come down here, I could, I guess sales rep was empty, so that was a bad example. But anyway, whatever you have, you can then dig, like if I want, if I had sales reps and I wanted to get the department of the sales rep, which is probably sales, I could, I'd just be able to come down here to the department transaction and I'd be able to drag it in. But as you can tell, you start to get pretty deep here. And this is what I mean by it gets a lot deeper. That's like four levels deep. It actually gets down underneath to an account of 1099. And honestly, I can't even tell you where I made it to. I went four levels deep into the, the sales rep for whatever, you know, for whatever reason, it, it let you go that deep down to a 1099 miscategory of the account tied to a 
department field, and it's actually, there's my answer that I didn't know off the top of my hand. It, it's actually an RF smart thing attached to the RF smart install that probably does nothing. So there's a lot of, of roads in here, I guess, that you could go down where you could, you could say it's, it's useless data to what you want. So you kind of have to know what you're looking for. Like in this case, I know I want to go after the sales order transactions for this subsidiary. I, I know that I want to go after the transaction line delivery dates because I know on my sales order, I have transaction lines, I have miles, miles are tied to this item. And I know that, you know, on that transaction line, I know my delivery date is right here. So that was the field that I went after by what I did. I went through sales order, went down to the bottom, went down to the mileage lines, pulled off the delivery date and the number of um, miles. Hey, Brian. And negative. Yep, so that's kind of a, a quick overview of everything we just did to get to this point. Um, we have a chat from Sherry. Yeah. The USA, she says, so your formula can be more complicated than what reports give you as an option or as option. I would contend yes, but I'm not a regular user of, of reports. I kind of went right to save searches for exactly that problem to, I had a better understanding of the data and a better, better way to put in formulas in there. So I, I didn't do a lot with reports, but I would venture and say yes. Thanks. Yeah, so I've, I mean, you could build large case statements in here as well. I, I built some scary case statements even within um, within safe searches, honestly. And you can do the same thing in here. I do like their, their validator checker thing. I think that that too even gets better than safe searches. Okay, so all that and we have a data set. Does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna move on how to turn this into a workbook. Hey, Brian, I, I do have one question about items. Yep. Um, so when I drag over a transaction line item, it's actually drilling down into the assembly and giving me every component of the assembly and not just the top level SKU. Do you, uh, do you get the same issue? And here I wouldn't, and my other side of the business I may. So item. Um, yep. And you are pulling the transaction line item, yep. correct? Yes, sir. Trying to think of why that would be. I've never seen it do this before. I mean, anywhere. You almost have to, it's almost like a hard to do what I did. So that's why no, I think but it's something I, that I, I did. Believe, <laughs> I believe what you did, because once in a while you you, you kind of get the wrong thing. So you, you'd be pulling a transaction line on a sales order where you're expecting the the assembly name and you're getting the the actual SKUs below it. I actually get both. So I have type oh, sales order. Oh, I that, have Okay. Then mainline false, and I have uh, you, you the know, one subsidiary. You know, you know what you may have to do then, if you're getting both. I believe what you're going to have to do. Um, let's see, transaction. Let's see. Oh yeah, transaction line item. Okay, I don't have the item in there. So if I did item transaction line item, I believe you may have to do item type. Oh, okay. And then you would strain out the assembly that way. As I said, this, this is what I mean when I, when I say it takes a little bit of work to see what you're getting and then you got to think through why you're getting it. Then once you solve each of those problems, you, you build up your, your memory bank of like things I had, crazy crap I had to do with <laughs> these things. And then you remember going forward and then someone else will ask you, well, why am I getting this? You're like, I know what to do. And then they think like, oh my God, you're a genius at this. But it's really just, it's what I go back to. It's practice, practice, practice. The more of these you do, the more you're going to learn those nuances. Like I even forgot that I had to do that, that absolute value thing. And it seems completely crazy that I had to. But once I know that, I realize if it comes on negative, someone else might go, oh, this thing sucks. And you might go, well, <laughs> You know, it, it is what it is. You got to you got to use the absolute value to get the positive. And in your case, you have to pull item and item type. And your answer, your or your first thing back will be, but my sales order doesn't show this the the sub items or whatever of the assembly, and it just is how it is. But that's why the item type field is there, so you could solve that. I think it gives you a little bit more because think about the alternative problem. Someone else is going to go, but I want to see that, but I can't pull it in the same report. That's what I mean by this extends you further than reports and safe searches is you can actually then get that double jump in, in the case that you just showed. Yeah. But, you. Then, but then you got to undouble jump it <laughs> Yeah. as a negative. Um, a quick question. How often when you're going through this, do you find that 
uh, the master data is not correct and you have to go back to the start and rework the data and then move forward. Do you, do you mean that your actual master data that people put in at your company is wrong? Yeah, like how often do you find, like do you have to have 100% correctness on that? Well, I mean, garbage in, garbage out. So it depends what's messed up and how bad. I, I guess what I would do, or the way I've always viewed this is, if you get these kind of charts and reports that I'll show you how to make in a minute, in front of everybody, you correct your master data because someone says that's wrong and you say, no, the master data is wrong, someone has to fix it. And you can really use it to be kind of anal retentive as an admin to get your data correct. So I've always said that even getting the, the more charts and more pivot tables out for people, the better because you're gonna correct the data more of like the, the wiki theory of, of correct data. But it might be a pain up front because if your data is really screwed up, yeah, you're gonna see it all. Cause this would be, it's very quick to see it all. Like I know if somebody actually fat fingered in this is 10,000 miles and I find stuff regularly. In fact, when I did this, I found, um, oh God, the, there was a delivery date. And this is a perfect example of what you're talking about. If I sort by delivery date, ah, look at this, look at this. 521 2019, we didn't start the trucking company until 519 or whatever, 2020, whatever it was. Therefore, I'm pretty sure this should be 519 or 521 uh, 2021 probably, knowing that that sales order. And I, I was just telling our ops manager for the trucking company, he had a transaction screwed up in there, but I, cause I see it in analytics, it sticks out like a sore thumb to me. So it's kind of funny cause after this meeting, I'm, I'm actually gonna write him an email and say, here it is, do you want me to fix it? Or are you gonna go fix it? Because you've got, you've got one of your sales orders for whatever, a few thousand bucks showing in 2019. I assume that's what you mean by master data being messed up. Yep, thank you. Yeah. So I, anyway, yes. So right there is a glaring example of my my master data. I have one transaction that's screwed up that I know about from a from a date perspective in the trucking division. Um. Okay. So anything else before I in in kind of the that's kind of the big that that was a big part of this because next we go on to basically making the workbooks and deploying them and then we probably are about out of time. Uh, I do have a real quick question. Uh, I know with save searches, there's actually an add-in for Google Chrome that will actually, once it's built as a save search, you can actually export it as a script and it will give you the formula to create it, whether it's in 1.0 or 2.x. Uh, say somebody else in the company builds one of these data sets, is there the ability to export pretty much the criteria and the columns, almost like a save search that you could then copy over and use in a script? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Um, and that, that might be something for the Sweet Analytics workbook. I've never done that, even on safe searches. And it's, it's you say that, and I, I feel like I've read that before, and it might have helped me when I was doing some of my scripting, but I've never actually done that even in, the, even in, in, in searches. So I've not, I've not heard of it, but I never used the other one either, admittedly. Okay. That's an interesting, that's an interesting thing. And, and uh, that's a good pickup for anybody on this call because I, I think I would probably use what you just said. I'll have to go look for that Chrome plugin, honestly. Yeah, what I can do is I can actually send it out because uh, it works in Chrome and also in Brave, which is what some of my users use as well. Wow. And it's saved me a few times. That's sweet. Yeah. Hey, maybe, um, maybe Mike, send that to me and then when we when we email out the that it, the recordings available and maybe some other things then we can we can have that included okay sounds good thanks okay so i'm going to move on in the name of time and i'll, I'll have a little more question q a at the end so let's say i'm going to save it again i know i saved it but i resorted it i'm going to hit create new workbook up here so right now it's just a data set now it's going to create a workbook and i am going to well, actually, I'll first thing I'll do, so we can do three things with the workbook, a table, a pivot, a chart, and you can make as many of these as you want. So let's say I'm gonna start out with a table. And again, let's say I'm gonna go quantity, I'm gonna go uh, date, uh, let's, go, let's go, I'll go delivery week, I'll go quantity, which is like my miles, and I'm gonna go transaction, so I can take whatever I wanted to, 
transaction number and I can go type sales order. I'll just pick four fields. I'll say I could sort ascending. I can um, come in here and I could rename the field. Like let's say rename this one for miles. So instead of Brian quantity, I could call it miles just for the purpose of this report. And I can make myself a nice little report. I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna call it the, again, test PNUG data set workbook. And I can type in a whole description here and say who the audience is for, whatever I wanna do. Hit the save button. So now I've built my first workbook with a table and um, they not everything is exportable to Excel, which is, or CSV, which is kind of annoying. They did put this little button on one of the releases. So now I could also click that thing and um, voila, I get myself a um, nice little um, um, Excel CSV printout of exactly that table. So that was something that they did do because everybody everybody really griped up a storm after the first release of this when there was no uh, CSV output, as I recall, and uh, a lot of people went nuts and they put it on there pretty quick. So that's a table. I come up here and I could call it, um, you know, we'll call it PNUG uh, table, table one. Okay, so I made a table. I could also go like this and I can make a second table if I wanted to. And maybe this table I just want, I don't know, date for whatever reason. Boom, same thing, PNUG table two. So you can start to get the idea of something like this is you could make a whole workbook for your finance team of all the reports that they want to run off a certain data set. Um, or you can make one off your sales team and have all these different views, all these different reports, some feeding dashboards. And that, that to me is the thinking is you make a, a workbook for a team or a collection of workbooks that they do their job with, um, as opposed to having to make monstrous Excel workbooks. So you can kind of see that that's the vision of it. We've done a little bit of that, probably not as far as we, we could have, honestly, but, but again, I, I, I sense that that's their, their vision. So now, next we're gonna go like this and we're gonna go, um, we'll do a pivot next. So pivot wise, let's see here. Let's say I want to go, I'll put in miles as the measure. I'll put in rows as the delivery. Let's see, columns will be delivery week and the rows will be whatever the, the entity. Uh, so child level does a pretty good job on child level and all that. And then you, you, you get this and you have to hit this refresh button sometimes to see the updates. I say sometimes, um, that time I did. So now you can kind of see, um, and then you could do delivery week, um, sort uh, A to Z. So I could kind of look at the, you know, from the beginning when we started the trucking company, we only had a few customers and you could start to see some of our customers started more and more, but a great look by customer, by delivery week of how many, uh, in this case, how many um, miles we ran for them. Um, oh, and then obviously I use quantity in this case. So, so this is a good, I wanted to show you guys this too. So let's say, oh, wait, I, I picked the wrong quantity. So I'm gonna delete that out. I'll go and drag in my, my Brian quantity. And, um, and again, then I'm going to go refresh and now all my numbers should be positive and not the, the negative quantities. There you go. Um, and then likewise, I could right click and I could, uh, I could rename this. Um, I could call that one again, miles, say, okay. Um, just so it shows up as miles in here. When people look at the workbook, I could say, again, pivot is going to be, um, call it customer weekly miles or customer weekly miles um, pivot or whatever. Say, so however you want your naming conventions to work to keep track of what these things are. And obviously then again, I could say refresh and always hit the save button. Oh, no, I'll start to zoom it. Always hit the save button. Um, and then that'll save it in your, your data set. Um, so again, let's see, last one I'll show you, a chart. Uh, kind of the same deal. You have your um, series here of, let's see. Uh, what's my series gonna be? My series is gonna be, my measure will be quantity. My series will be, um, well, this will go a little crazy, but my series will be the entity. 
and my X axis will be delivery week. And my, and then, okay, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. So let's say, boom, chart in there. Okay, and that's crazy because now that's like every customer is going to be on there. But anyway, that said, now I could also choose a bar chart, a column chart, an area chart. Unfortunately, this is the only level of charts that they have. Uh, they don't have, so we could, you know, make the bars go the other way, for example. We could, they don't have pie graphs, they don't have the geographics, and, and I assume that eventually they're going to do that. Obviously, I have way too much data in here. Um, but that said, now let's say I want to take my entity and I, I only want to do a top 10. Now, now I could actually get down to my top 10 customers and it makes a little bit more sense. And I can go top 10 by week, however I want to do it. Um, let's see what else here. I can also, I could say sort entity. Okay, filter entity. I wanted to show you this. Filter entity. So now I can actually add a filter to it. So let's say I only want to look at, um, um, let's just say I only want to look at, I guess something like that. Certain customers, I think I still have my top 10 entity on there. We'll see how that comes out. So anyway, then you could add a filter in here. There you go. And, and you can see then your filter sit up here. So if I want to get rid of, I could say entity of seven values and the top 10, the top 10 is really irrelevant for that. So I could take it out. And again, I could go like this and refresh it. So you could sit and mess around and make these exactly what you want. So, it, you know, it's, it's kind of an example. Oh, and you could see the other thing here, you could see this isn't sorted by week. So if I wanted to come into delivery week, I'll say sort A to Z or Z to A. And again, refresh. The good news is it's always refreshed when it's on your dashboard. Whenever you load your dashboard or refresh it, it'll always refresh it uh, for people. So you don't have to worry about people coming into here to refresh it so their dashboards refresh on the, on the positive side. And again, I'll call it, you know, whatever, PNUG, uh, PNUG part one. So, okay. So a little bit of a crash course, but very quickly, once we put all the work in, into the data set, the, P, the test PNUG data set, we were able to very quickly make a table, table two, miles, boom. Um, so we have a pivot, we have a chart, we have two, two data tables. You could see that you could apply filters to it. So like anything back here in the pivot table, you could simply if you want to only look at 2020, you can come in and filter the delivery week and only do certain dates or only do, so there's a couple of ways to do it. You could have a, a kind of a bigger data set than what you want and strain it down in your workbook, or you could strain it down in the data set and say, just give me 2020 and 2021, or just give me 2021. And then you have a 2021 data set. So it's kind of your call, how you design those. Do you want to strain the data and put in that logic in the data set itself, or do you want to do it in the workbook? And so then you could say, I want a 2019 pivot and a 2020 pivot and a 2021 pivot, and you could set it up that way for your users. But you can see it was pretty quick and friendly for me to make you know, a chart, a pivot table, and a couple of data tables. Um, if you want to ever jump back then, and I'll throw this in here, if you want to jump back, you could always, your data set's right here. If let's say you want to add something else, you could say open data set. And let's say I want to add in, I don't know anything. What would make sense? Let's see. Eh, oh, what if I want, ah, I don't know. What if I want my uh, driver? My driver, my driver. So if I want to bring my driver in here, that would be, Oh yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> That's my, it is actually my, it's actually my driver, um, the resource allocation ID. Um, let me see. So then what I would need is my actual resource. So I have my resource. This is No, okay. So 
All right, so I'm just gonna show you how to do that. I'd have to take another minute to figure out. I could actually get to the person's name and bring it in here, which would be more meaningful than just the, uh, the actual ID number of the driver resource allocation tied to it. And what I'm talking about is when you look at my sales order um, itself, uh, we actually tie the driver, the number of hours, all that, through, through an actual resource allocation um, of the driver who's gonna be running that load. So, but you can, you can get to that in here. I'm just, in the name of time, I'm not gonna sit and try to wind through. But what I wanted to show you was, so I've, let's say that's an actual person's name as opposed to resource allocation. But I could say save, and I could say apply to workbook. And now I would come back in here, and now I would have that there. Let's say I wanted to add that to, to PNUG table two. Now I would have that in there. And so you could, you gotta remember, I want a new field, I've got to go back to the back to the data set, update it in there, then I can come through and update it in a workbook or a table or whatever I wanted to, and that would all come through. And I think that was, I'm looking at my list here, time the data set pivots charts, yes, um, changing the data sets, refreshing the data sets. So that kind of covers now the data sets and making of the workbooks, and now you have a workbook that you can, um, go and share with someone. I'll get to that next on the sharing, the permissions, all that, and then putting it on a dashboard. To, actually, I think I will work through most everything, um, but I'll pause real quick. Any questions on the whole um, uh, workbook conversation, making these fun charts? Angela, Rhonda, good? Yep. That Sounds good to me. So once you're there, we could share them. And um, you can either share with roles or people directly. So if I wanted to share this, you know, with a role, I would simply, uh, how would I share it with my, I'll share it to my role, my, my other role. I would just go share, boom. And now the workbook is shared out to someone. Click share again, roles, I can see it's already shared to me. I could take myself off, um, hit it again. So you share out the workbooks to people accordingly. Um, and so, so then that person can use them. Um, the other thing I will show you real quick now is now that you have this, let's say I come into my, into a dashboard. Let's see here, let's do, Personalize analytics uh, setup. So now the analytics part like gives me access to everything I just did. And with any luck, I'm gonna have PNUG down here. I'm gonna have PNUG down here now. Yeah, I don't have it. There it is. Okay. Oh, okay. It was under T for test. Uh, test PNUG data set. And under the test PNUG data set, you could see I have PNUG chart one, the pivot with miles. So I could really do anything I want to in here. Um, but let's say I do it like this and I'll call it PNUG test. And now hit save. Now I can, uh, I'm not sure how this will come out. It's a full screen. But now I will have, okay, no, not too bad. Now I will have a chart and I could actually hover over and get like the customer names and the quantities and the week on it. I'll have a full view of this. Um, and I can actually change it between a bar, a column, an area chart right on here in, in the dashboard itself. And I can even show a percentage. So now that'll be there every time and it'll always update whenever it comes in. Showing the percentage is worthless on that one. But that's basically how you do that. If I wanted to come in and put the pivot table in here, same thing, I've come to analytics. I would go, um, oop, I'd go setup. And I would come into PNUG. And I would come into, what did I say, the pivot. And you could show the number of visible rows. Let's say I set that to 20, hit save. And that's gonna tell you how long it is. And then I could have the full pivot. 
sitting there, like I said, and then I could, you know, wind over to it or go up and down, but I could have the, the pivot in there. So, so again, in here, then I would have the, I would always have the pivot now on my trucking page and I would have the, the chart that we made always showing up on the trucking page. And again, standardly, they give you like five, I think on the main dashboard page, when you come in and do the whole uh, setting up of your own custom dashboard pages, you could set up however many you want. You could have a hundred analytics things if you want. You just have to sit and wait for them to load. And by the way, when there's like a hundred things loading or whatever, it's really, really slow. We've, we've tested that and overdone it a few times. But that is how you actually deploy them to dashboards. So your first step is sharing that with someone, like a role. In this case, I didn't have to share it because I'm the one who made it in my F expedited manager role. Um, I generally like to do everything from my admin menu. I kind of went through the trucking division menu just because I was using them and all the examples. Generally speaking, probably a good rule to always use your admin menu to make them and share them out from there so you kind of know where they are and who owns them. But um, I, I believe me as the owner would be me as the owner everywhere under you know, Brian Bishop, the username. But that said, probably a best practice. Don't do what I just did. Uh, make it from your admin menu. Um, and that... Let's see, I think the only other thing I will do is uh, from here, you could always go like this, click up here and say, jump to the workbook. So I'd be able to jump right to the, the workbook. And the last thing I will leave you with is, pivot tables are not, um, and charts I believe are savable as the chart as I recall. Yeah, maybe not. Um, pivot tables are not exportable. These tables have the little CSV thing. Pivot tables do not. People griped about it. Um, I didn't mention you could add subtotals, row, you could total rows, you could total columns, you could put it at the top or the bottom. Um, so you could do all the totaling that you want up here. You could freeze certain, let's see, enable. Oh, um, you could enable. Um, row highlighting or disable it. So same thing with column highlighting. You can go like that and be able to highlight things for people, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can freeze the row headers. You could freeze the column headers. So you could say like that. So like that crazy, oh, I'm doing like, like that. So you can freeze the, the side. So just make it however you want. The user can make it however they want for presentations. And again, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot um, export a pivot table. There's always screen scraping. And I'll leave, I'll leave you with that. It's unfortunate people griped about it. Maybe eventually you could export a pivot table, but I don't know, they'd have to really integrate with like um, a Google sheet or a Excel sheet and, and maybe, maybe it's unrealistic. So what we've been doing is where people want to have the pivots in Excel or whatever, we've been downloading the data set for them, remaking the pivot and saying, here you go, have fun in Excel. Uh, it is what it is. So that is everything I wanted to share. Um, we want to open it up to any questions yeah, then, right? Better. Yeah. Any question? Do, do, do. I know there's a lot going on. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was really good. And, you know, it was a, it was a, a lot to cover too. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a question, but thanks, Brian. This was tremendously helpful. Yeah, we we do really appreciate it. And so uh, if anyone else has an idea for a lunch and learn or, you know, some other topic we want to go through as opposed to the 15 minute webinar, um, you know, just shoot me an email. But I do really appreciate this, Brian, because I know a lot of people were interested and we did have a huge turnout. So. Well, um, it's practice. practice. The biggest thing. Um, once you start making a few of these, and you realize, like, you'll you'll trigger ideas. You'll you'll get to say, oh, you know what? I, I want to use Safe Search for this, or man, it would be really cool because if I just made these five views for my sales team, you know, there's some people that a couple of the views that I flashed over today on my dashboards. People say it's like their Bible. They look at it every day, and that means <laughs> they don't have to go in and run a Safe Search. They don't have to go and export to Excel and muck around with charts. They can sit there and go to a dashboard. It's all updated. It's a graphical. It's visual, and they can see what they need to work on for the day. And those are the kind of things that I think are the, the low hanging fruit for people to go after and, you know, get the practice with to say, 
because even here, you know, we were able to wrestle, even I, I ran into a couple of problems, honestly, when I was building it, because I, I didn't remember how I did some of it from like whatever, a year and a half ago when I built this thing originally. But just to get, you know, sales orders, buy customer, buy miles, all that stuff, um, and, and get them into a couple of views. I mean, it took a little while, but once you make it, it's there, and then it's solved, and you can move on to something else, and people don't have to be, you know, looking at this, so. Yeah. Um, you know, this is recorded too. So for anyone that wants to go back, um, I will post the video, the recording, um, probably not till next week, but I will send an email out once it's done. So anybody that has anything else they want to add to that or um, let me know before next week. So, okay. Good question. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Brian, this is Mara. As you were talking about like sharing these um, workbooks and data sets with other individuals in your company, when I share a save search or report, sometimes up top in the, the browser where it has the link for that, I will yep. send that. Is it the same if you do that with these analytic reports? Um, like if I wanted to share Yes. yes, like if I wanted to share, if I just copied that and emailed it to a coworker, would they be able to click on that and then access that in NetSuite? Let's see. Looks like the answer could be yes. Okay. Oh, we'll give it a second. Yes, the answer is definitely yes, it worked. Okay, yep. a, a simple question, but I just, I was thinking of that because sometimes when I, instead of, you know, downloading it, if they just wanted to go into NetSuite and, you know, look at it here in this view. Yeah. Okay. And, and usually, like I say, you just need, obviously, it's like slash report.nl question mark workbook is 85. That's a good sign. Okay. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, then. Uh, thanks again, Brian. And um, this meeting is over. We'll, we'll see everyone. Have a great, uh, have a great evening, afternoon. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.